let's dive deeper into why it's important for you to know about your hip flexors and core being connected and why it's so crucial for you to get out of back pain and also help to improve your hip mobility. Now, I'm going to give you a little analogy. People who know me know I love analogies. People who are meeting me, well, I love analogies. I don't know anything about orchestra. I did Google it to actually give you this bit of visual because I thought it was actually a good one when we're talking about the whole body. So your whole body, I want you to think of it as a well-coordinated orchestra. People pay big bucks to come and see these people and hear these, this orchestra. Different, whole different sections coming together to make um, effortless sound, let's say. So your hip flexors, they're the string section. Now, they're responsible for the rhythm and the lower tones, okay? The rhythm and the lower tones, they're belting out, while the core are the conductor and the brass section. Now, they provide direction and power. When these, this orchestra comes together, the hip flexors and the core, and they come together, it's harmonious, it's efficient, it's effortless from both areas. When it's not... This is when we're actually going to get into compensation and pain, and I'm going to go through that in just a second. Let's start with the hip flexors. What are they? Well, I'm going to tell you now, they're the only muscles, group of muscles, that connect the lower body to the, to the upper body, sorry, to the lower body. They connect to the lumbar spine. They come wrapping around inside your pelvis, then come and connect to your femur bone, which is your thigh bone. It's hardy bone. So this is how it actually, um, when it's actually playing tug of war, will actually give you lower back pain and restrict your hip movement. So what it does, what the hip flexors like to do, they help to flex the hip joint, obviously. They stabilize the pelvis, which is very important in all movements, and help to lift your knee to your chest. So not necessarily just, well, when you're lying down, that action, even walking, we need to bend our knee. Our knee comes close to our body and then pushes away. That's an effortless gait, effort, effortless walking pattern. Now, what does the core do? The core helps to stabilize the spine and the pelvis as well, helps to maintain your posture, and also helps to transfer force from the upper body to lower body. We need this in every movement. It actually helps protect your spine, helps protect your pelvis. So the two of these have very important job roles, even just separately. But let's talk about what pain is presented when your orchestra is not effortless and it's not efficient and people are not paying big bucks to come and listen to your orchestra. So like I mentioned, the hip flexors are actually connected to the, uh, your uh, lumbar and then to your femur. So when they actually start playing um, tug of war, lower back pain is going to come because it is playing tug of war, A, eh? and also compensation is going to happen. So weak or tight hip flexors or core muscles are going to um, have that ripple effect. Muscles, neighboring muscles are going to have to start working harder. Other muscles are going to fall asleep because those muscles are working harder. So now we've got that over, we're well in the cycle of overactivity and underactivity with lower back pain. Lower back pain really needs these 17 muscles either side of your pelvis to actually provide the support, the stability, and also have have it all moving effortlessly sounds like it's hard but it's not hard to do once you know what you're doing so now you're going to create hip pain remember the hip flexors actually connect to the lumbar spine and to your femur your hip your main hip bone where the ball and socket joint is just below the ball and socket joint so um overactive hip flexors will lead to underactive glute muscles now if you have been following me for a little while you will understand that glute muscles are the it for your pelvis okay and for movement through your lumbar spine um, protection through your lumbar spine to improve efficient movement um it will when we actually have correct glute muscles and correct hip flexors your balance between upper and lower are going to be more efficient the ripple effect of that compensation will be low I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect because I don't know your situation. But the imbalance will cause hip joint, uh, hip pain. It will help, it will cause hip restriction. And then, hey, you know what? Compensation is going to start happening. We're going to have joint strain. We do not want joints to be working harder than what we don't want joints. We don't want to be relying on the joints to have movement because the muscles are connected to joints. Muscles are connected to bone and they support our movement. That's it. 
role reversed, you're going to create things like bursitis, arthritis, tendonitis even. Like we just want the muscles to be doing their job role. And when we don't have, and let's stay on track with hip flexors and core, when they're actually not working to um, efficiently, then it will, the joints will take over, the muscles will fall, fall asleep or become overactive. Now, knowing this, overactive and underactive do present you with the same symptoms. So it's very important to understand whether you've got restrictions or no restrictions. So let's keep going with, you know, the benefits, let's say, of the hip flexors and core being connected. You'll improve your walking pattern. So like I mentioned, the hip flexors help you bend your knee. And very common, I assess biomechanics on a daily basis. I assess walking patterns. That's how I assess biomechanics. And probably one of the number one reasons, um, common mistakes, I'm going to say reasons, common mistakes in the walking pattern is knee lifting the knee and then also heel to toe. These two... Um, common mistakes in our gait do create lower back pain and hip restrictions. They will switch off your um, hip flexors and your core now will be no longer. So remember that um, both of these connections, both of these muscles when connected will actually help your load distribution from upper to lower. When the load distri distribution is not correct, every movement you make now goes to your lumbar spine. Your lumbar spine doesn't want that. We need the core and the hip flexors to be able to create more efficient movements through our feet, our knees, and our hips, and to create stability through our pelvis. And that's a big factor when we're talking about connecting muscles. So when we actually get these two muscles connected, it sounds like you're probably there nodding your head going, oh, wow, actually, this is my problem. The, the lack of um, power through my hip flexors and my core is completely weak. And it is easy for these two muscles to not be connected, but it's actually, when you know what to do, easy for you to be able to connect them back together. When they are connected back together, you're going to be improving your mobility and your flexibility in your hip joint. Remember, your hip joint is the biggest ball and socket joint and needs correct movement. When we restrict through that ball and socket joint, even by 10%, because we're not robots and we work on compensation, so let's say 100% ball and socket movement, you've now taken that down, let's say 80%, we've lost 20%. 20% movement now is added to your lumbar spine and it doesn't want that. The lumbar spine does not want extra movement. It likes stability. So. Benefits of it is that you're actually going to help with your hip mobility, then also helping protect your lumbar spine and your pelvis. You're going to have better pelvic stability. Um, you're going to have more efficient movement. And hey, you know what? You're going to actually reduce the risk of any injuries. Now, you don't have to be an athlete to have injuries. I say this to many people. It's like me. I'm always in a rush. I've got a thousand things I'm doing. I come down my stairs, I might miss the bottom step, have a little trip, I don't fall down, but I have a little um, try and catch myself and I don't have any injuries because my muscles are working efficiently. People who don't have the correct stability through their pelvis, don't have the correct stability through their lumbar, aka hip flexor and core connection, you now might actually shift your pelvis. Do you know, it's easy for your pelvis to come out of alignment, easy for it to come back in, but easy for it to come out when your hip flexors and your core are not doing their job role by creating stability through your pelvis and your spine. We need balance. We need stability. You know, we need that correct balance between stability and mobility. And this now will help uh, limit the risk of lower back pain because, hey, you know what? We've got correct uh, transfer of force and we've got more efficient movements. So stabilization is the big one. So hip flexors and the core muscles are playing a, a crucial role in stabilizing your pelvis and your lower spine. And you're listening to this because you actually got some inc um, incorrect movements through your hip, your ball and socket joint, or in your lumbar spine. And we want them to move more efficiently. So we need to do a little bit of work on it and connecting our hip flexors and the core. Um, and stability is actually essential, crucial, critical in maintaining correct posture and balance during every movement. Having correct stability through your hip flexors and core means that neutral spine will happen no matter what. So that's end goal. 
okay? And I've spoken a lot about load distribution. This is actually huge in all movements. When you don't have that load distribution correct, all your movement is going to your lumbar spine. Lumbar spine here, the red section, likes 15% movement. Now, picture yourself losing ball and socket, ball and sockets lost um, movement. Remember, we'll take it back to what I said, we've lost 20% movement. Now, this is 15%. You've added 20%, so that's 35%. But your hip flexors and core aren't working correctly. We've now added more movement, more suspension, to the lumbar spine because we don't have that load transfer. So you can see how over time with compensation, you're now adding all that pain, all that movement to your lumbar spine, and you're going to create, you're going to be deep in that pain cycle as well. So we want to get that load distribution correct. And then also we want to move more efficiently. So you might go, yeah, yeah, Lisa, I want to move more efficiently, but you know, that's a bit of a stretch, right? It's not a stretch. You can move more efficiently. We need to be addressing hip flexor and core, obviously, that's why we're here. But once your hip flexor and core are actually connected and functioning, functioning, your knee movement in your gait and your heel to toe movement in your foot will be more efficient. Obviously, we'll have to address to see if there's any underlying factors, but it will help be more efficient when the hip flexors and core are actually connected. So by connecting these two muscles, you're going to enhance your functional movement. You're going to um, boost daily activities. You'll have more energy in a sense. You're not going to be bouncing out of bed, but because when you don't move efficiently, you're draining your energy battery because your body's having to work overtime. You'll have more um, energy essentially because you're moving more efficiently and you're going to reduce the strains to your lower back in awkward movements. So me go running down the stairs and missing that last step. And it's going to help you to ensure that you're not going to create pain by doing that. So that that's the important factors, okay? That's just touching base on the important factors of why hip flexors and core have an important role separately, but they have a crucial role when you actually connect them together. What I've done is I've actually um, added a link to this so that you can actually go click the link and I've added a couple of exercises for foundational work. So I don't know where you are in your journey because I have thousands and thousands of ladies who and men who actually want help in my community. So I'm only giving you the foundational work. If you find that these exercises are so easy, then please reach out and I'll give you the updated um, leveled up exercises. So but what we would want to do, remember what I said, overactive and underactive will give you the same symptoms. First and foremost, let's go and release your hip flexors. Because they have, like I said, a very crucial role in movement. So we want to go see if we've actually got restrictions through your hip flexors. Now, when you do that exercise and you find that you don't have any restrictions, I've given you actual exercises in connecting the hip flexors and core. They're very basic and you're going to watch the video and go, oh, my God, they're so basic. But can you do them? Do you need basic? Probably. Let's take it back to actually connecting your hip flexors, hip flexors and core to improve your movement, create better load distribution, and stop that compensation pain cycle. That's a wrap on yet another episode. If you love the info, don't be shy. Make sure to like, follow, or subscribe, whichever platform you're on. Once again, share this on your socials, whether it's Insta or Facebook, and make sure you tag me in it at Lisa McLean or at Rebuild Program. Whether you're in chronic pain, have a nagging injury, an athlete who wants to improve your performance or just want to be more efficient and be a better you, then this podcast is for you and stay up to date by liking, following or subscribing to be notified of any new episodes coming your way. On that note, I'm going to leave you until the next time, but make it your mission to be more aware and to be a better you.